Hello and welcome to RMU Focus. I'm Austin Bechtel. And I'm John Hanna. And this is our last week. This is the last week, John. The last show before break and the end of the semester. I'm going to really miss it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss, miss it being too. up here with you every Friday. It's been good working with you, but we got yes, a good show for today. Yes, we do. And speaking of good show, we actually have a special guest right now. Oh, well, three of them, actually. We do. We do have three guests. Uh, Tell us about it. Kaylee Whitlash is sitting down with a couple members of the RMU Counseling Center. We have Maggie and Tiffany in store. And we have a little special guest in Dash. Kaylee, what do you have for us today? Thanks, guys. So I am joined with uh, Tiffany and Maggie. All right, can you guys tell me a little bit about yourselves and what you do at the Counseling Center? Yeah, so I'm the Assistant Director of the Counseling Center. Again, I'm Tiffany, and I also am a therapist. Most of what I do is therapy directly with students, but I also will help the director with any administrative needs that you know we're dealing with in the office. I am a Thrive Leader, which is a mental health outreach leader on campus. So I am like the student involvement in the Counseling Center. So I work with both the students and the counselors to address different mental health issues in the Counseling Center. And all right, I see we have Dash here with us today. Now, can you tell me what the purpose of the dogs are in the camp at the Counseling Center? I also know you also have uh, Violet, which is the yes. other dog. Yeah, so what is their purpose? So we got the idea to get Violet and then eventually Dash because we used to do Therapets and we still do with um, Animal Friends. They bring in volunteers who have trained therapy dogs for the students and it was such a huge hit that we thought, you know what, why don't we just get our own therapy dog? And a lot of students will come in just to see them, not even to talk to a human. Um, and it definitely provides a lot of emotional support. Sometimes students might be feeling homesick because they have a pet at home or just you know, be just struggling emotionally and coming in and either playing with them or sitting and, you know, cuddling with them can definitely be very therapeutic. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, what other services does the Counseling Center provide besides the dogs? <laughs> so the Counseling Center provides both individual and group therapy and the way that it works is a student will come in for an initial appointment with a counselor and then we'll determine the best next steps, whether that be just a few supportive appointments or you know, maybe ongoing therapy, maybe a community referral, maybe they need help from another department on campus. We definitely help them get connected with whatever resources they need. And then we also have outreach, which is where Maggie comes in. Yeah, what kind of outreach do you do then? So with Thrive, we do different events uh, about every week and then some sporadically throughout each month uh, centered around a different focus of mental health. So uh, stress release and anxiety are two really big ones because that's what hit home what hits home for college students the most. So we do different interactive events. Uh, this Wednesday we're doing a bullet journaling event. So it's a gratitude journal right in time for uh, Thanksgiving. So we're super excited about that. Yeah, that's great. Um, where is the location of the Counseling Center just for first year students who may not know? Absolutely, so the Counseling Center is located perpendicular to the front entrance of Nicholson. So if you see that big circular planter that's kind of in the front of Nicholson and you're facing Nicholson, we're directly to your left. And we also have our own private entrance. So unless you're in the counseling center, there's no reason to be in the counseling center. So you won't have to worry about, you know, bystanders and things, people like that seeing you. Yeah, and also for the first year students, how are you able to set up an appointment? That's a really great question. So it's super easy. You can either email counseling at rmu.edu, you can call 412-397-5900, or you can just walk in. That's great. Um, so just a few weeks ago, um, students received an email about the Healthy Mind Survey. Um, what is that about? What does that entail? So Maggie actually knows a bit more about that. So we are a certified JED campus now here at RMU and the survey set out to almost inspect the like get a feel for how students at RMU deal with their mental health and what stage they're at within it so it's something that we as a counseling center do not uh, like create it is a JED based survey so we do not see the results are all private information to the specific person, but we do get like a uh, result at the end of where RMU stands within their different levels. All right, and when is the last day to take the survey? The 21st of this month, so next Thursday. And students are able to take that through their emails, correct? Yes, every student should have received an email on November 4th, and some students may find it in their spam folder. 
Okay, that's great. Um, so, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up, which means that's great for students to get a little break, but then once they come back, it's almost finals week. Uh -huh. That means a lot of students deal with like stressing or stress and like test anxiety. Um, what kind of advice would you give to students dealing with that? So, the main thing that we tell students whenever they're talking about feeling stressed about tests is uh, to make sure that they're taking care of themselves, so making sure that they're eating, getting enough fluid, sleeping, just basic needs that often go unmet whenever students are feeling very stressed. And then as far as preparing for their exams, obviously giving adequate time to study, taking frequent breaks, like not trying to study for like three hours in a row without a break and you know expecting to do well, um, you know, trying to avoid pulling all-nighters, uh, going to tutoring if needed, um, arriving early for the exam and like maybe even doing some like breathing exercises or something to help calm them down. Um, but every student has different needs and so if a student does want to talk about test anxiety or they're feeling upset about finals, they can definitely come in and talk to us about it. And something I forgot to mention before is that we also offer walk-in crisis appointments which become very highly utilized during finals week. You know, students are you know, their emotions are often very elevated, and so they can walk in if they're in crisis and don't need an appointment. Oh, that's great to hear. So Maggie, can you tell me just a little bit more about the Thrive program and how students can get more involved? So Thrive is a paid work position at, with the Counseling Center. We, there are nine of us, I believe, around nine of us, and we just basically are there for both the students and the Counseling Center to be the middleman between two so if students don't feel as comfortable coming to somebody a little bit more of an adult, they can come to somebody that's more on their level and they see as like a peer. And uh, before final, the week of finals, we are doing a whole week devoted to stress management and stress relief going along with the finals week stress. So uh, if students want to come out to that, it's a definitely a good stress relief thing. We try to do more mental health outreaches that are more prominent in college campuses and stuff like that. Oh, that's great to hear. Well, thank you guys for stopping in today. Thank you, Dash, for being so well behaved. Um, so thanks, guys, for stopping in. I'll thank toss you. it back to Austin in the studio. Thank you very much, Kaylee, and thank you very much, Maggie and Tiffany, for coming into the studio. And thank you very much, Dash, for being such a pleasant guest. Yeah, but, very well behaved. Yes, but speaking of Dash, uh, it's really now the perfect time to mention that this is a special animal week. It's uh, Human Animal Relationship Week. Not only is this relationships pets wise, uh, I know I have a dog that I love. I also do. But it's for uh, animals that help on like farms or agriculture wise emotional support animals like Dash. And it's also animals used for medicines because I know they sometimes test some stuff on animals uh, just to make sure it's not harmful. It is. Need to have awareness for that. But speaking of animals, you know what John's love? You know what dogs love, John? <laughs> peanut butter. John's also love peanut butter. John also loves peanut butter. I also love peanut butter. John, what is your favorite type of food that involves peanut butter? Reese's. No question. Reese's, Reese's, Reese's. How about you? Well, ironically, I am the same. I also like Reese's. I think Reese's cups are awesome. They're amazing. They're great around Halloween. Yes, they even are. Even around Thanksgiving as we approach it. We know we are not sponsored by Reese's, but we both love them. Yeah. And uh, for more Army Century Media content, uh, us, uh, we're writing articles for sports, news, arts and entertainment, everything like that. Visit rmucenturymedia.com. And what do we have coming up after the break for all these wonderful people watching? Well, John, coming up after the break, we will recap what has been going on around campus. So stay tuned here on RMU Focus. Hey dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? 
Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to RMU Focus. There were multiple neat events around campus this past week, especially on Thursday. Some of the events, the Super Smash Bros Club hosted a Super Smash Bros Tournament that began at 6 p.m. in Hale Room 203. Also, the Centers for Student Success and Act 101 came together to host a holiday card crafting event Thursday morning. But if you missed out on any of these events and want to look ahead to others coming up, make sure to visit Revolution for more details. That's right, and it's actually uh, another event that happened last night. The, D for, or the Delta Phi Epsilon sorority hosted D for Dude, which you might not have heard of it, but it's a male soror or male's breeding pageant uh, ready to help uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Army Century Media's Scott McDaniel was at the event to give us a closer look. What do you have for us, Scott? D for Dude is a male beauty pageant that we use that Delta Phi Epsilon hosts to raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. If it's like a male beauty pageant, you know, more people will come to see because, you know, men are not like a gender form of men, you know, just dancing and being like goofy isn't really like, you know. For some people, so I guess the men is like, the men doing the pageant just brings more people as well. Plus, it's just like for a good cause, you know, it's just like. Um, so basically, um, anybody who's interested will come and talk to us and they'll each represent a different organization. You represent Fanny Delta? Fanny Delta. That's all Fanny Delta. Um, and then after that, um, they've matched people up with coaches. So I was matched up with Terry, we're both in the band. Um, and so basically, he does most of the work. I'm just here to approve and have some guidance. But it's all him. It was actually pretty, it was really nice to have her as a coach. Because at first I didn't know what D for D was or like anything when he was not. And then I found out she was my coach. It's the first meeting I couldn't make. So, and then like she talked, she texted me, she was like, hey, I'm your coach. I was like, oh my gosh, like, okay. And then we've talked, we've been talking ever since, you know, telling me stuff about the, um, playing before, telling me stuff about the event itself, gave me, helped me bounce ideas over for my talent. Um, helped me, like, even with outfit changes and all that, outfit changes with, like, my outfit and stuff. And, like, oh my gosh, like, hyping me up via my hype you know. Thanks, Scott. And for the full recap of the D for Dude event, head to rmucentralmedia.com for the full article. But now, I'm joined by Jonah Hoy. Thanks for coming on, coming on Jonah. Thanks for having me, John. So, recently you saw a uh, movie, Jojo Rabbit. Uh, just give me a little insight. What was that movie about? Jojo Rabbit is a romantic comedy, and it takes place during Nazi Germany in the 1940s, uh, particularly right at the end of the war when Germany was losing. And it is about this little kid named uh, Jojo, who is kind of like a little bit of an outcast in the Nazi community. His big thing is he wants to be like... He wants to be someone, his best, his imaginary best friend is Hitler. So he like talks to him. Okay. And he wants to, his best friend in his mind is Hitler. So he tries to do everything in his power because he's just a kid. He's 10 years okay. old and he never really fit in anywhere and just wants to be in a place where he belongs. So he's kind of, you know, he's very malleable and he's naive as a kid. But, and as he's growing up through this, he is, uh, his mom is harboring a Jewish girl who is obviously fighting the resistance and trying to get away from them and he starts developing this relationship with her and it's obviously problematic at first because he's going against everything he's ever known and that is everything told him and now he's just like come to terms with he's like what what do i actually think and he's like having a come to jesus moment so to speak and what was your favorite part about that movie? my favorite part was even though it was a comedy and it had these very light elements to it it took to a different persona when it also dealt on the sad parts. Like there, I don't want to give any spoilers out to anybody, but at, obviously it's very comical and it's very exaggerated because it's taking such a dark sub subject and turning it into something that's funny. But also it brings uh, back to reality and the reality of the harshness that what it was Nazi Germany during the Third Reich, and it just it makes you feel something. It makes you laugh. It makes you cry. It makes you do all this. And I think that's more towards the end. I don't want to give anything away, but that was probably my favorite part. 
Right, so I take it you liked the movie? Oh, I did. I loved it, actually. I thought it was very well executed, the way that they took a very dark subject and made it come to life in such a comical manner with exaggerated jokes, um, the way they portrayed the Third Reich officers. And even there was even like parts where uh, you could say you felt for one of the Third Reich characters who was actually helping Jojo out at the very end of the movie and you didn't want to see him go even though he was a Nazi for most of his life. It was something like, it was hard to like, it'd be like, oh, I feel for this guy, and he, maybe he wasn't actually that horrible of a person. I'm not sure if you've seen this movie, but do you, uh, cont how do you think it compares to The Book Thief? The Book Thief? I've read the book, but I've never actually seen the movie The Book Thief, but I know it's about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he like steals books during yeah. Nazi Germany yep. and stuff. Uh, this was also based on a book, actually, and uh, comparing the movie with the book, I'd say, I'd say this was more my type of style because I'm a sucker for romantic comedies. Because like, uh, like when Harry Met Sally and uh, uh, I forget, I can't even like Valentine's Day and stuff like that. I don't know. They just kind of make me happy. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jonah, and uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank time. you for having me. It was uh, wonderful. I'll have to watch the movie if it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's great. But uh, we're gonna. Coming up after the break, Austin Bechtold is going to sit down with our very own Luke Yost, producer of Colonial Sports Center, to discuss the various RMU sports that have happened over the past week. Stay tuned here on RMU Focus. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnies. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Welcome back to RMU Focus. I'm now joined by Luke Yost, producer of Colonial Sports Center and the sports multimedia editor of Century Media. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, Luke. Well, let's talk about what's been going on with RME Sports. Yeah, last week, football, they took on, um, excuse me, Duquesne. It was blanking my mind. Hasn't beat Duquesne since 20, uh, 2012. Went in there. Team, won, on a mission, won 41 21, beating a cross city rival for the first time in a while, and cementing their ticket to a championship matchup against CCSU later this yep, week. Big game against Central Connecticut State with championship aspects on the line for the Colonials. So one thing that I'm looking at um, is volleyball coming up this week. I th they got two big games coming up, two road games, one at Long Island and one at Fairleigh Dickinson. Two games left on the season until the NEC championships that are coming up. Yeah, Austin, this is going to be more of a tune-up game for this volleyball team. Not a lot of uh, – we're not, we're not going to see – they're not going to see big competition against Fairleigh Dickinson, one of the worst teams in the conference, and LIU, who is the worst team in the conference. So they got to take these these two matches, these you know, in these six sets. Probably, hopefully, it'll be six sets. You quick, would think so. Quick, easy work. Get home in time for dinner. But like, they're going to go into these with the mindset, okay, we're pre preparing for the conference. I know I talked to Dale Starr after the uh, FDU game, and he mentioned that you know they're not really 
worried about the conference. That'll happen when it happens. But right now they're worried about winning uh, these last two games. And you know, in the back of his mind, though, he's got to be thinking about okay, conference. When conference play happens, we've got to be ready to do battle. Yeah, that's my go-to game. What are your go-to games to see this weekend? My go-to game this weekend is this uh, football game versus CCSU. And if you haven't left for New, Bra uh, New Brighton, Connecticut, you have to do it right now <laughs> to get there on time for this one. Of course, Rob Morris and uh, CCSU playing for the conference title. Arguably, this is the biggest game in the history of Rob Morris football. Not only are the Colonials perfect, as long as the Colonials perfect conference record on the line, but they are playing for the conference championship. And if you look at the overall record, Austin, it's easy to tell that the 9-1 and one Blue Devils are heavy favorites against the 6-4 and four Colonials. Right. But it's not the same Colonials team we saw get stunned by uh, Kentucky State and then steamrolled by Youngstown State. During the, impro in the improbable undefeated streak through conference play, Robert Morris has been playing a team that is, has a mentality of win or bust. Four of the five Colonials conference wins this season uh, have come from second-half comebacks. And the CCSU team has dominated every team they've played this year, the exception of Eastern Michigan. But this will be the battle of two premier FCS defenses. CCSU showcases the best FCS defense in football right now, just allowing 276 yards per game. The Colonials defense, though, ranks 23rd in the nation, allowing just 339 yards per game. But that phenomenal Blue Devils defense is complemented by top 50 offense that averages nearly four, uh, 415 yards, excuse me, and uh, but the RMU offense really not anything to surprise anybody. Not going to do anything crazy. Uh, they're 110th in uh, in the FCS as far as offense goes, averaging just 292 yards per game. But uh, this game is shaping to be an instant classic. Only time will tell if RMU can leave the Hardware City with an NEC title. Definitely, definitely going to be a defensive-minded game, and I think it's going to be probably low scoring. So we'll go back to my go-to event, Yost. If you haven't started traveling out there, you got to go travel to see volleyball. Uh, two out-of-state games this weekend. They travel to Fairleigh Dickinson tonight, starting at 6 to take on the Knights. And then Saturday afternoon, head to Brooklyn to take on LIU. These are the last two regular season matches for the Colonials. They will look to continue uh, and add to their record-breaking season. RMU currently sits at 24-3 and overall, Luke. 14-0 and in conference play, winning all 14 conference games in a row. The NEC ch regular season champion Colonials will host the NEC tournament, as we mentioned, coming up, taking place Friday, November 22nd, is the semifinals, and the championship match will be held on Saturday. Both games will take place at a time yet to be determined. Yeah, and that's that, those are going to be two big games, and, and football is going to be a big game too. But let's talk about hockey. You know, men's hockey right now, looking like a different team that we've seen the past couple years. Past couple years is a team that's really just focused on you know, scoring a lot and just trying to ride their offense to the next level. But this year they have to play defense. They don't have a lot of goal scores. They lost Alex Tange last year, Brady Ferguson the year before. You can look at the the amount of point scores they've lost the past couple of years with Michael Loria, who wasn't at the top of the team in points, but was he was still somebody that was going to get you uh, 20 to 25 points a season. And then now they don't have that anymore. They have Danny Mancinuto, Justin Adamo, um, guys like Luke Lynch are still there. Luke Lynch had 30 points last year, but only 10 goals. So it's, it, they have to find their footing, but they have a, a good chance to do that this week against Bentley. Bentley, not a great team. Bentley just 3-6 and six right now in the season, 2-5 and five in their conference play. Um, but really, Justin Kalpmaster should have an easier time shutting down this yeah. Bentley offense that is very um, – is, is underperforming. Uh, by a large margin. Should be a good opportunity for the Colonials to bounce back, get back on track. We've seen a lot of great sporting events this week. Women's basketball has kicked off. Uh, men's basketball kicked off against Pitt. A lot of great events going on around campus. So, Luke, thank you for joining me. Coming up after the break, we will discuss Thanksgiving. I'll be back with John Hanna. And we will also talk about places to be for this weekend ahead. So, stay with us on RMU Focus. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. 
If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad? Do stars visit their friends? Look! And welcome back to RMU Focus. Yep. I'm now joined, rejoined by John Hanna. Good to be back. Good to be again. Good to yeah. see you again, John. Last week, Central Media went out to ask RMU students some Thanksgiving themed questions. Here's a short clip from those interviews. I was visiting. All right, so we're going to start with some easy questions. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? I do celebrate Thanksgiving. Of course I celebrate Thanksgiving. Do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving? We, we all celebrate. It's not a question. I, yes, I do. I no do. question, we love Thanksgiving. I do. My family celebrates every year. We usually go to my grandma's house. And I love Thanksgiving. Uh, do you or anyone else you know actually eat breakfast before Thanksgiving? I do not. I don't, I don't think anybody eats breakfast on Thanksgiving. I don't know why you would when there's so much good food uh, later on in the day. We go to my grandmother's house, and yeah, we like we don't have dinner, but we have lunch. No, we eat, we eat all three meals. We're kind of large. Thanksgiving's not a sprint; it's a marathon. <laughs> so you can start in the morning, but you just got to make sure you pace yourself throughout the day. Oh, definitely eat breakfast. I have to disagree. I do not eat breakfast. I just starve until it's time for the big meal, and then I overload on food and then pass out on the couch. And then, really, you want stuffing or mashed potatoes for you? 100% mashed potatoes. I mean, it depends on how good it is, but I think I have to go mashed potatoes because that's a classic. Absolutely stuffing. If it's good stuffing. Mashed potatoes. Those are my favorite food. Do you actually like turkey? I mean, does anyone actually like turkey? I mean, I mean it's pretty dry, which is aggravating. I don't mind the dark variant, but the white meat variant is kind of dry. But, like, I'll eat it. I do not like turkey. I don't eat turkey on Thanksgiving. Uh, my family makes ham as well as turkey, and I never touch turkey. I like turkey, yes. My whole family likes turkey. We're big turkey guys. You know, I'll eat turkey any day of the week on a sandwich, you know, just by itself. Sometimes just go to the lunch meat drawer in my refrigerator, and I'll just take a piece of turkey, you know? I do. I can't say I like it alone, but if, like, you get the right type of gravy on it, like, I am a big fan of turkey. I think many people like turkey. I, th I think most people like turkey. I don't, I, I've never heard of anybody that really doesn't like turkey. Very interesting to see what RMU students are doing for Thanksgiving meals. To see the rest of those interviews, check out last week's show. So some upcoming places to be. My place to be, women's basketball. Coming up, they have a game versus Columbia on Sunday afternoon. Team is coming off of a 58 to 43 victory over Youngstown State on Wednesday. First win. To open up the UPNC Event Center, the home schedule for women's basketball. Yes, it is. But for my place to be, I'm going movies. I know we movies. had Jonah Hoy talking about Jojo Rabbit in here, but my movie, Ford v. Ferrari, it's released today, actually. It's about the 1966 Le Mans uh, Grand Prix, which is in France, uh, and really the rivalry between Ford and Ferrari, the Ford Mark II beating the Ferrari GTO, and uh, stars Matt Damon and Christian Bale. I'm going to be seeing that tonight, opening night. That'll be amazing to watch. That sounds like a lot of fun, John. Definitely yes, a great place to be. So. This is the last week of this show. Unfortunately, it is. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it, too, John. It's been a great show to be able to put on. And what has been your favorite part? Uh, just being here every, t every Friday, just being here with you. Uh, I like the dog. The dog was great. I think, you know, being able to have some interviews, um, being able to work here just on the main stage, being able to work over at sports. I also do like the fact that I wasn't even scheduled to cast on this show. You I was not supposed to be uh, Our producer, guy. Nathan Galderisi, asked me, because uh, uh, your former co-host for an episode, Andrew Ostrowski, was out with a hand injury. He didn't make it. But we want to thank you 
for being here on RMU Focus. I'm Austin Bechtold. I'm John Hanna. Thank and uh, thank you. We'll see you next semester thank here. Thank you very much. On the new RMU, RMU Focus. Focus.